My name is Caitlin Boggess and my number is 03013-0021 and today I'm going to be doing a creative presentation and I'm going to be looking at the family effect and the metamorphosis, how Gregor's family was affected by his transformation and how Gregor was affected by them. So to do this I, I looked at specifically at the connotation in the excerpts of the novel of the novella to to create diaries based on each character, um, Gret, father and mother, to see their feelings on the transformation. And then I looked, I looked at how Gregor reacted to those feelings to be able to see throughout the novel how, his, how he gradually deteriorated and died at the end. So I use simple language to look at this because I want to be able to focus on the, like why he's feeling this rather than what is he trying to express. So. That's what I did, and I'm specifically looking at family relationships and just how they went through this and how Gregor reacted to this personally. So most of the novella is told from his point of view and his first person views of what he sees and goes through in his family. So I, to look at this, I want to see how he feels about himself, how this reflects his self-identity and his self-worth, and how do these feelings bring him to his death, and how does this affect him the most? So what were the thoughts and feelings of Gregor's family? So throughout the rest of my slides will be mostly my diaries. And after each diary, I have some excerpts to look at and some highlighted connotation to look at um, to, to see how I made these conclusions. So Gret, when in the morning she woke up, she knew something was wrong. She always had a strong connection to Gregor. So she, she kind of reacted internally a lot of the time. And when she... She stayed in her room, so we didn't really know what she felt, but in my mind, I either see it, she either took it two ways. She either took it selfishly, where she's worrying about herself. She's worrying about, oh my gosh, is my brother going to be able to support the rest of my family? Or did she really do care about him and hope that he's all right? So when she does learn about him, um, I, she stays in her room most of the time, so she stays away from the main conflict, and that kind of shows just the type of person she is. She not really into the whole the dramatic dramatic part of this experience yet and right now she's just trying to wipe away the memories and all the bad times and move forward and become the leader in the family who's going to take care of Gregor. So these are some things that Gregor looked at. She, he wondered why was she crying and he had the same reflective inside of it where he's like is my sister worried about me and is she worried that I won't, I won't be able to support my family anymore. She was very clever, and Gregor saw that, and she even, she cried, like I said, she cried to herself in her room. So before she even knew why Gregor, what was wrong with Gregor, and what state was he was in, she was already emotionally affected by this. And the way Gregor takes this is, at this point, he's very happy that somebody cares about him, and that his first response was that, I'm going to be taken care of by my sister at least, so... His mother reacted a little differently. Um, she, throughout the novel, she's very submissive, like I said, like um, some other people said. And um, she tries to decide what happened to him. She sees it as a sickness, or she sees it as something's very wrong with him. Um, she tries to make it in her mind that something's okay, that, she, that the clerk, she tries to get the clerk to understand why her, her son was like this. And when she does finally find out what happened to him, she feels very lost and helpless, and she has her, she really loses her sanity most of the time, and she isn't able to understand him, look at him, and she's just very hands-off to the whole situation. So these are some excerpts of how she lost herself, and she got down to the ground, and she lost her sanity, and she even had screamed outside the window, and so it kind of shows that this is kind of how it is the rest of the novel, where she's not a part of anything. She just has, she's very internal, where she's just trying to take care of herself. So she can't take care of Gregor. So her father, from the beginning, um, this is the only emotion I saw out of him, was when he first saw Gregor, and he did cry. So that was like the last time, and he pretty much, I saw that as he let go of his son at that moment. And after that, he takes on an authoritative role, and 
He's very controlling of Gregor and very protective of himself and his family, and he's very selfish about that. And these are some quotes about how he was hostile, he clenched his fists when he first saw him, and that's kind of how it was the rest of the novel. He wasn't he just wasn't able to, to internalize it and make an emotion. The only emotion he could express was anger and hate towards Gregor. So the first couple of weeks, Gregor is able to take, Gret is, ta is able to take care of um, Gregor, and she does a good job of this. She, her and Gregor have this role at the beginning where they see each other, they're comforting each other, and that makes Gregor, Gret, Gregor feel okay, and that makes Gret feel okay. So she's able to go through it, and um, they have like a bond where they're both equally understood of each other. And as weeks go by and things happen, like he takes the furniture out, this is kind of Gret's turning point. She's not really all there for Gregor, but she's not totally away from Gregor. She hasn't snapped yet. She hasn't totally hated him yet, but she's having difficulty seeing it still seeing Gregor as his, as his brother, but she's still there for him. But right before his death, things change, and she totally snaps. Um, at, what, the event that really brought her to this was when Gret was playing the violin, and Gregor came in, and that kind of got rid of the only thing she cared about, and the only thing that was really hers still, her most of her life now, is taking care of the family and taking care of Gregor. So now she really can't take this way anymore, and... She she calls him an it, which kind of which takes away the most of the humanity from him. She went from being a brother to being a creature to being an it. So that takes that totally is 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 affected by Gregor and really hits him. And then the last last person that Gregor sees is Gret when she um, shuts him in his room and she says, "At last, he's in his room. At last, I don't have to deal with him anymore." His mother, throughout the entire book, wants to be a part of Gregor. She wants to see him, but her family and I think herself knows that she can't handle it, and she she's not strong enough. She's too weak of a character to take care of him. And she, there's many instances where she faints and loses her sanity, and that kind of shows just how how weak she is and how she's in between Gret, Gret and his father, where she's not totally authoritative, but she's not there for him at all. So she's just in the middle. She's not able to make her own opinions about the situation. And she's never able to speak directly to Gregor. She coughs, and she she can't even look at him most of the time when she talks to him. And so just not speaking to somebody when they're experiencing something like this and coughing says a lot about how you can't, she, how she's not strong enough to even talk to him and to really um, get with him on a personal level. And his father, throughout the whole thing, he was worried about the money situation, and he was okay with Gret, Gret and um, his mother trying to be there for him, but he wasn't going to be there for him. And he kind of takes it like in a bitter way, where if something bad were to happen, and he would, and Gret, Gregor would have gotten out of his room, that wasn't his fault. That was their fault, and that he knew the, the best thing, and he knew that they shouldn't have done that, and. He takes on a role as an officer, which is a controlling position and authoritarian. So I see that as he's he's taking as a role where he doesn't have in his own home. He is never able to control his own home and control Gregor and control Brett and control his wife. So he takes on this role where he can control something. So that makes him so Gregor sees this and looks at him and sees him uncomfortable and peaceful in this position. Uncomfortable because he's not he's not happy that he has to go to work to do to get this role, but he's peaceful that he finally does have some control on his life. And gr gr another thing to point out is during the whole time, his father was very selfish. He never wanted anybody to look at Gregor. When the gentleman came and saw him, he didn't worry about what was Gregor was doing. He was worrying about the gentleman didn't see Gregor. So it kind of shows how. He's too protective of his family and too protective, well, excluding Gregor, he's too protective and too selfish to see outside of his own world. So when he died, when Gregor does finally die, Gret, I see that as she's relieved, but I see it as she's about to be not so relieved because her future will become the future of Gregor. 
she's going to probably take on the role of supporting her family by getting married and getting money for them. So I think she feels, she senses this, and she loses all, all her speed, all, all her, her role, her big role in the family was to be the voice and to be there for Gregor, but she's about to lose all that because he's gone and about, and because she's about to take on the role of the family. And after his death, his mother was the only, this is the only time, the first time his mother was able to decide whether or not that Gregor being gone or staying was the best idea. Um, before when it was brought up, she wasn't even able to respond to whether Gregor should be there or not. But now that she's gone, she, now that Gregor is gone, she realizes the best outcome and she kind of gets her role back in the family. She's more comfortable now and the family is unified, which she likes. And his father, of course, is very happy that Gregor is gone. Um, he wanted her to be gone, him to be gone ever since Gret decided that that was the best option. And he sees he has control again. And he sees the, his future in Gret. So he, like I said, it kind of backs up the idea that Gret will be the provider now. And so these are the direct impacts that I saw with Gregor. Um, Gret, Gret, throughout the book, you can see the deterioration. Gret left him in his room. He went, she went from cleaning his room and helping him to leaving him in the dirt. Um, he stopped eating and he stopped sleeping, which happened pretty much directly after, um, in the, the third part of the third part of the novella, where he, he loses most of his humanity. His sister calls him an it. He's not a person anymore, and. One thing to point out is throughout this whole book, he still saw, saw himself as looking after his family, but he didn't want to look after his family anymore because it only enraged him. So this kind of gets the idea that even though he's, in, he's not providing anymore, he still sees it as he's looking at his family even though they're not looking back at him. And when before he died, he thought back to his family with emotion and love, which is kind of an interesting idea because his, he didn't, his family didn't look at him this way. And his family was very selfish towards him and just terrible. And throughout this, he wanted to get, he finally was happy that he died because his sister wanted him to be gone. And he, he was happy he was going to be gone, even more so than his sister. So he, his self-identity and his self-worth is very weak, and he doesn't have one really at all. He, well, it's there, but it's, he, he isn't, that isn't able to sustain him. He is, his physicalness, his physical emotions and work is gone, and the only mental state he has is weak and terrible and because of his family, and even though he sees them as great, they're not there to help him at all. And with this selfishness and with this hate, it really breaks him down physically and mentally, and so that's what really killed him in the end. Um, you point out that the, the viewpoint of the novella is very limited and subjective, but you were able to infer, based mm -hmm. on the specific passages um, that, you, that you've used today to direct your diary entries for mm -hmm. the three characters, you were able to infer their feelings. But given that it was such a limited, uh, subjective viewpoint, what do you think was Kafka's purpose of only having Gregor's very limited subjective viewpoint and what was lost from not having the insight of the other characters? Well, definitely what was lost was it was hard to find how Gregor felt about himself. Mm -hmm. It was constantly how what his family was going through. So to find the things that really caused him to die in the end was difficult. Um, so that's how I had to I had to decide that his family was the reason for this and I had to infer these feelings onto Gregor. Mm -hmm. So and then the the, the best what, what, so what the was best? gained. What was gained from this was having only one viewpoint, it's kind of it stays along the whole no, the whole novella and you can see just from the word almost the context of the words that the sadness like they said, and that he wasn't able to, there was nothing to keep him going. Um, this, the word, the, 
the wording got really simple and really um, straightforward. It stopped being elaborate and started being more like focused on life and focused on humanity. So that kind of, sh kind of that kind of took that into account and shifted thoughts over that he was dying and there was no details about it and it was hard and it was difficult and that's just how Franz Kafka did it was he just really stuck it down and it was hard because it was really sad but it was it got the point across so very good